Hey there, I'm Russell Zachary Fieser with Ulta3 Research, and one of the products we offer is Certified OpenStack Training. And we have a great course that teaches the objectives of the Certified OpenStack Administrator Exam. I know it's a great course because I got to help write it. But today, in this video, our objective is to enhance our understanding of how OpenStack works. So we're not going to focus as much on testable objectives. I just want to take a very narrow slice that I think is very important to op understanding the, the big OpenStack picture. We're going to focus on Python clients and how they allow us to interact with OpenStack's APIs. Now, just a heads up. Either before you view this video, I mean, you're already watching it, so maybe after you view this video, I recommend clicking on over to another one of our training videos. It's on how OpenStack permission files or OpenRC files work. It's not a prereq, but it's synergistically going to help you get a little more bang for your buck in, in watching this video. Of course, when we finish, we're, we're a training organization, so I'm going to give to you a mechanism to be able to reach out to us, Alta3 Research, if you're searching for OpenStack training. We handle individuals, we handle companies, but we'll talk about that later. For right now, let's get started. All right, gang, so what I did is just took a slide right from my, my OpenStack training manual. Uh, let me set this up for you. What are we trying to learn here? Well, on the right, I have a thing called controller. And what you need to know about controller is this is where OpenStack software gets installed. So OpenStack is more than just a single set of software. It's a collection of software that works synergistically together. So I might install Nova here, Cinder, Glance, Keystone, Heat, Swift. That's all going to be on controller. Now, if you look on the left, I have local to user. What does that mean? Well, this means your environment, whatever that happens to be. Is it your personal laptop? Is it a box you SSH into? Is it a Windows machine? Is it a Linux machine? Is it a Mac? Don't know, don't care. The point is you are separated from the controller by a WAN or LAN interface, right? The only way to reach out to the controller is ultimately going to be using HTTP, HTTPS protocol. Focus on the S right there. Now, back to controller. You see this thing called RESTful API Nova. You see API Cinder, Glance, Keystone, Heat, Swift. I need you to understand this is not Nova. Nova's a lot more than Nova API. In fact, trying to say Nova API is Nova is like saying my ear is Zach. I'm much more than just an ear. That's my listening component, right? So what is actually going to happen is somehow an HTTPS message will arrive at Nova API. Nova API's job is to interpret, deconstruct the message and change it into AMQP, that's Advanced Message Queuing Protocol. We don't need to explore AMQP right now, but understand that's the protocol that's going to bounce around inside of the controller. If I move back to the environment that's local to me, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to get connectivity to that controller? Well, actually what I'm going to do is install some Python clients. And you can see at least in this slide, there's a one-to-one -one relationship. I have a Nova Python client or a Python Nova client. That speaks to Nova API. I have a Python Cinder client that speaks to Cinder API. I have a Python Glance client. I have a Python Keystone client. I have a Python Heat client. I have a Python Swift client, right? Now, if I wanted to say launch a virtual machine, what do I need to do? Well, I would need to know that, well, Nova controls compute. So what I'm going to do is issue locally a Nova command. So Nova, launch for me a virtual machine. And Nova will have no problem. It'll say, okay, well, you type Nova. That's the Python client's actual, um, that wakes it up. It says, I heard my name. I heard Nova. 
and then it reads the structure of the command and says, okay, the human, human speak says create a virtual machine. So what its job is, is to take the highly abstracted human talk and change it into HTTP, HTTPS protocol to restructure the simple human command into HTTP to embed JSON object down in, in the message body and then to fire it to the API endpoint. Remember, the API endpoint's the ear, the listening device for Nova. So it receives it, it changes it into AMQP, and then maybe passes that AMQP message to Nova Compute or Nova Scheduler or one of the other pieces of the Nova software package. Now, these Python clients, it, it, pretty neat as a trainer especially. As a trainer, I'm able to say, Hey gang, I want you to create a virtual machine. And my students will get to work. They say, okay, create a virtual machine. Uh, Zach, is that a cinder command that I have to issue or a glance command? Or, oh, it's a Nova command, right? So right there, boom, there's learning involved. They just associated I had to pass a command to Nova in order to get a virtual machine to start. Or I had to pass a cinder command to cinder in order to create a volume. Well, that's, that's wonderful from a trainer's perspective. What about from an end user's perspective? I mean, most end users have never heard of Nova. They've never heard of Glance. They've never heard of Keystone, Swift, Heat. They've heard of OpenStack. Why should an end user have to know to write the word Cinder because they want a volume created? This isn't just my conjecture saying this is bad UI design. The community has admitted, you know what? This might have been bad UI design. They've come up with a new replacement client that's seeking to replace all these. One ring to rule them all mentality here, folks. Let's go ahead and let's check out that single client. All right, gang, so one ring to rule them all, right? First, look at my controller. Nothing's changed over here. I got a bunch of APIs speaking AMQP out the back end. In the front end, they're getting HTTP, HTTPS messages from a, a WAN or LAN interface. Look what's changed local to the user. At this time, now they only have to install one client, the OpenStack, the Python OpenStack client. So now, when you type a command, you just type OpenStack, image create. The, the, the client's smart enough to go, oh, that's a glance command. I'll go ahead and target glance. Or maybe you type open stack uh, server list. Oh, we're trying to retrieve a list of the servers that, that the virtual machines. That's a Nova command. I'll pass that to Nova. So what we're trying to do is, is unify a command structure under just one client. Now at the time of the vi this video's made, um, only Keystone, only the Keystone client has been fully deprecated. What that means is everything you could do with that old Python Keystone client, you can do with the Python OpenStack client. They are not, they OpenStack Foundation is not advertising deprecations for all the other clients yet. So you might still be on the hook to install multiple clients, but the way we're moving in the future is going to be just the Python OpenStack client. So I want to hop down to the command line now and just take a quick look at how these OpenStack Python clients might work. All right, gang, so here we are now in Alta 3's remote desktop environment. This is the same environment that I teach from. It's an environment that every student that comes through Alta 3 Research OpenStack training is provided with. Let me break it down for you. We are here. <laughs> this big red we are here tells us we are here. And we call this landing zone beachhead. It's simply a remote desktop environment. You are looking at it right now. I could launch Wireshark. I could open terminal sessions. I could open a text editor. I could launch Firefox. I can explore um, a, a file structure. It's a remote desktop. 
It's a desktop environment I'm sitting in. Now, this particular remote desktop has IP connectivity to a controller. We've already discussed that in OpenStack, the controller is where OpenStack software lives. And it also has IP connectivity to two compute nodes. In OpenStack, compute nodes are where my hypervisors live. Hypervisors host virtual machines. So I have two places to host virtual machines. I have one box which is hosting all of my uh, OpenStack software. And then I have just sort of a fun playground desktop environment where no OpenStack software is running. That is to say, no controller software is running. What I do have installed here is the Python OpenStack client. Now, I have already pre-installed it, but I don't want to shortchange anybody. So let me show you the commands that I would issue in order to get that installed. Right here, just two of them, in my Linux environment, it's a sudo apt install python dev python pip. That simply builds the prerequisite uh, Python software packages. And then pip install Python OpenStack client, that installs the Python OpenStack client for me. Those two commands and I'm off to the races. Now if you're saying, wait a second, I have a Windows machine, I have a Macintosh machine, okay. You gotta do a little bit of digging on how to get Python installed on your particular, in your particular environment. But then guess what? You're just, again, pip install Python OpenStack client is what you're on the hook for here. That installs the OpenStack client. At this point, I can type OpenStack and I get a response. It says, yeah, I'm ready to go. Send me a command. Now, I could issue a command here, but I do have a problem. And by the way, you can type OpenStack and you're taken into an environment where you could do something like user list. Now that's fine. Or you can also do OpenStack user list. It's, it's the same thing. You're issuing the same commands both times. One way you don't have to keep typing OpenStack. The other way you keep typing OpenStack, right? So OpenStack user list, and it's going to tell me, I don't know how to authenticate you. And even if I did, I don't know who you are. You know, so we have two problems here. So the solution to this is the OpenRC file. And as I've mentioned, I've already made a video that does a very deep dive into the OpenRC file. Um, it is a, 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 a permissions file that instructs a command line client, the OpenStack Python client in this case, to, to know who I am. It provides the Python client with an authentication URL. It provides it with my username, with my password. Why don't we just take a look at one? So admin RC is the name of an open RC file I put together. Uh, again, not going to do a crazy deep dive here, but you see an export command. That means set as an environmental variable, in this case, a project name set a domain name, set a username, set a password, set an auth URL. That's Keystone. That's the socket that Keystone is looking, looking, listening on for HTTPS messages. Because here's what happens, just real quick. When I issue an OpenStack command, what's going to happen is my OpenStack client is first going to look to that auth URL and say, well, I don't know if this admin alt to three character is, is real or not. So the first thing it does is reach out to the API that Keystone is listening on. That's the auth URL. And Keystone, if it can authenticate that particular user, will send back a token as well as a thing called, there'll be some other things as well, but the big one I, I want to focus on now is token and a, uh, a service list, the service catalog, it's called. And what the service catalog has in it is a list of all the API endpoints that this user can interact with. 
So where that OpenStack client was really dumb at first, after it authenticates, and if it's able to authenticate that user, and a message comes back, an HTTP message comes back to it, where the service catalog goes, here is maybe not Horizon, but here is Heats API, here's Keystone, even though you already have it, here's Keystone APIs, here's Solometer, Nova, Neutron, Glance, Cinder, and any other services that we want to have advertised in that catalog. So now the OpenStack client can go, okay, uh, you know what? This was a, you know, we're doing a user list. So it's kind of funny. We go to Keystone once, we'd go there a second time. A second message is going to be sent out to Keystone and say, hey, we're not authenticating this time. We have a token this time. It proves we were authenticated but just looking for a, a user list, a list of users. It could just as easily have been maybe a, um, maybe we issue a command in Nova, server create, we're trying to create a VM. But always, 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 the first trip needs to be to Keystone, to authenticate, to the auth URL. We need to authenticate this user. Get back the token, get back the service catalog, then the OpenStack Python client can worry about targeting the appropriate um, actual OpenStack service API that'll get us back the answer we're looking for. So just for kicks, I'll source admin RC. And my prompt only changed because I've, I've created a fancy RC file. This value right there changes the colors and the way my prompt looks. It's just a reminder for me that, oh, okay, I'm now issuing commands as admin. That's all it did. Uh, but watch this. Now if I do an OpenStack user list, no problems. I actually get the list because I've taught the OpenStack client where I provided persistent environmental variables within my bash shell here. I've been able to say, here's who I am. Here's where Keystone is. You're able to go authenticate me. Go authenticate me. And if I'm authenticatable, you'll get back a list, the service catalog of all the other API endpoints you might want to target. There you go, gang, Python clients. They're not tremendously complex or hard to understand, but if nobody bothered to explain to you what they are, they can certainly make working with an OpenStack cloud mysterious. How are my commands moving from my terminal up to that cloud environment being interpreted? If you like this video, Check out some of our other free training videos. We're always putting out quality material, so subscribe to our channel. If you're thinking, you know what, that Zach character seems kind of fun and like he knows what he's talking about, I'd love to see you in a training class. We run private training classes for organizations. We also run training for individuals, public classes. If you're interested, all you have to do is click over to alta3.com, chat with one of our salespeople, while you're over there, you can even request free lab access to the same environment I just demoed with you today. We even provide you with a few structured labs so you have something to do once you get the OpenStack environment. All right, gang, that's it. I hope to see you soon in a training event.